Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to talk about our third oxidation re reduction reaction, which is called the displacement reaction, where one element is displacing another element in a reaction. And typically the reason why that happens is either because the element is more or less electronegative. If it's more electronegative, it's more likely to grab, grab electrons. If it's less electronegative, it's more likely to donate electrons. And so there's going to be switching taking place in which element the molecule takes up. So let's take a look at these examples here. Here we have solid zinc and copper sulfate. Now it turns out that copper is more electronegative than zinc. And so therefore, it's more likely to grab the electrons from zinc Turn, uh, that way this will be oxidized, this will be reduced, they'll switch around places and zinc will now combine with, sulfur with uh, the sulfate ion and copper will then come out as a solid in the precipitate. On the next example right here we have chlorine gas, we have potassium bromine. Uh, notice that uh, chlorine is more electronegative than bromine so it's more likely to grab electrons. So it's going to take the electron away from bromine, that then becomes electronegative. So you can see minus one, it will then combine with potassium, which is positive, and therefore we have bromine coming out as a liquid that is now has an oxidation number of zero. Here we have sodium and water. Sodium is very easily uh, oxidized, and so the hydroxide ion from water will oxidize sodium. They will then form sodium hydroxide, and hydrogen gas will then come out. Here we have magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Notice magnesium is very easily oxidized as well, very easily gives an electron away. Chlorine is very electronegative, it will grab that electron, turn magnesium into a positive ion, oxidation number plus two, combined with the chlorine, and hydrogen gas will then escape. And here we have aluminum and iron oxide, or that's also called ferric oxide, because it's oxidized to the plus three state. Notice that iron is more electronegative than aluminum, so it's more likely to grab electrons. Aluminum will be more likely to give up those electrons. That's exactly what happens. Iron comes in, grabs electrons from aluminum, turns aluminum into an oxidation state of plus three. Uh, iron will then go to neutral state, come out as a liquid. Ooh, why does iron come out as a liquid? Because it's done under very high temperatures. And matter of fact, this is how we actually get iron ore out of the... Uh, out of the ferric oxide state by heating up to very high temperatures. We can then do the displacement and combine it with aluminum here and free the iron. I don't know if that's the uh, economical way to do that, but the, definitely that reaction works. Again, for the reason, iron is more electronegative than aluminum, more likely to grab the electrons. So a lot of the displacement reactions all have to do with one element being either more electronegative or more electropositive, and therefore, or less electronegative, I should say, it's not electropositive, and so high or low electronegativity, which then causes the element to be replaced or displaced in the solution. And that's a good example of oxidation reaction reactions.